So, good afternoon, Slush. It's great to be here with you. I'm representing a big company, an established company uh, in the forest product sector. But sometimes one could say that, you know, small companies, small problems, large companies, large problems. And that's very much, many times, could, can be true in also in our case. But there are fantastic new opportunities that uh, forest products industry can offer for us and, and for even for the world, as you will hear in the next 15 minutes. And my, my theme will also then be to talk about what type of opportunities are there to work together uh, with startup companies. We have done a lot of work in, in the last two years, three years, uh, with various types of startup companies and with good results, and we want to do more of that. So I'm Jyrki Ovaska, I'm the CTO of UPM, a company that, that has deep roots. So we basically have been in the business for 140 years. So one can say that we've been through thick and thin, you know, during this time frame, and, and we've been sustaining. As you can see, we are also, also a, a publicly quoted company, and, uh, and uh, we're doing great. But it's not all fine and dandy, and especially in the last, uh, uh, last years, last 10 years, you know, our main business in this company has been graphic paper. Because some 10 years ago, it was about 75% of our sales and maybe half of our profits. Uh, and that was, that was maybe one of the first areas where that, was, and, uh, that was hit by digitalization. So advertising started to go, go into the web. Uh, our customers, basically newspaper uh, and magazine publishers, also retailers, catalogers, they also have migrated into digital media. So it's a huge challenge if your main business is, is under fire, so to say. Uh, so what we did was that um, we also noticed that simultaneously, luckily, there has been a trend of of um, uh, as a, a trend of fire economy, so that the next industrial wave, the sixth wave, as the uh, World Watch Institute basically expects, will be that of a bio economy. And, and that is, then we talk about sustainable solutions, we talk about uh, um, uh, resource efficiency and bio-based uh, materials uh, of various kinds. And, and that's talking business. Then we are really, we have been in this, this part of business for, for more than 100 years. So uh, now it's the matter, how can we basically take use of that uh, development into our advantage? Um, so basically it means that we need to, need to redefine our, our space. And it's a bit like in the in the telecom sector, you know, the telephone companies in the 70s and 80s, they, they didn't have much more than telephone business. Now they are, of course, telecom businesses. IC, IT sector has been turned into ICT sector, so it's a bit of similar, similar development that we are facing in, in the forest products industry. Um, currently, talking about UPM, we are, we are a 10 billion euro company and our global footprint is everywhere in the world. So we have manufacturing facilities. Of course, our roots are here in Finland, but we, have, we are equally much in all European, major European countries, in USA, in Asia, as well as in, uh, in Latin America. We, by the way, commissioned one new uh, label paper machine actually today in China. So we have another step in our growth uh, growth path in, in our existing businesses. So six uh, business areas currently. We are big in chemical pulp manufacturing, in, uh, in sawmilling. We, are, we, are, we have a carbon neutral uh, portfolio of energy. We are a huge, huge energy company. In label materials, we are number two in the world. Uh, in the paper business, we are, we are really big still. That has been divided in two parts now. Uh, and only the Europe, North America one is, is declining. All the, all the re rest of our businesses, our growth businesses, also plywood is there. And then we have some other businesses that are, are uh, joining the gang. Well, 
but our company is very much in a, in a transformation. So we already look different than what we did some seven years ago. And let's say going five years for, uh, again, our portfolio businesses will clearly be different than, the, uh, than, than what they are today. So um, one of our values is renew with courage. And we have to practice this, uh, this value every day when we try to enter the new businesses. And uh, those new businesses, they call different types of things than, the, let's say, traditional businesses from a large corporation. Uh, it calls curiosity, as, as was mentioned over here. So you have to be interested in these businesses uh, to start with. You, you need to have new competencies when you talk about novel technologies, new applications, new type of markets where you haven't been before. Uh, we need to have partnerships. You cannot do the, these type of developments alone. Uh, it's, it's very typical that we, we have to uh, partner very widely with the, uh, academia, with universities, but also with the startup community. And we need to have startup mentality. That also is also something because if we are developing into some of the new areas that I will soon will show you, um, uh, we really can't think that we are a big company. If we do that, we are, we are totally wrong. We have lost it already to start with. Because we are really a small, small tiny startup company in when entering into these new, new areas. And then this is something that I keep on repeating to my team all the time. And there's a lot we can learn from the startup uh, mentality as well, the, uh, how, to, how to go about it. And then, of course, you need to have, be determined to, to uh, scale up businesses and also to find commercial success. Because ultimately, that will be the, the um, um, the uh, acid test for, uh, for any, any new businesses. Here, by the way, you can see a car, and you might wonder what, what the heck is a forest products company talking about a car. This is uh, maybe our all-time best marketing communications tool. We basically demonstrated with a, a university here in Finland, at the University of Applied Sciences, uh, in a four-year project, a student work, uh, because we wanted to demonstrate how bio-based materials can be utilized in an automotive industry. And we actually got a good spot last year in the Geneva car show. That was actually in the main hall between Mercedes and, uh, and BMW. And uh, it got a lot of attention. And uh, you, we have some quite cool videos if you go to YouTube and, and put their bio for concept car dot bum or whatever. You'll get, uh, you can learn more about it. Um, United Nations have basically project, projected that the, in the next 15 years, by 2030, there will be need for roughly 50% more for nutrition or food, 45% more need for uh, energy, and 30% more for water. And it's quite clear, I guess, for everybody in this room that it cannot happen unless we have renewables coming to play a more significant part of, 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 the, of the equation. And uh, in that sense, forest products industry can, can really be a, part of a, a big part of the solution in these areas. And UPM's BioForce strategy is really based on, on versatile use of, of uh, wood biomass. It's about uh, innovations. It is, it's very much about uh, resource efficiency as well as uh, sustainability. And uh, in, in our case, sustainability is very deeply embedded in ourselves. It's, it's not a lip service in that sense. And I, I think that it's, it's, not, it's not by accident that we've been uh, elected in a global leader in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index fourth year in a row in, in, the, in this industry. So now, talking about uh, new businesses, what, what could this be? So in, in this respect, we're putting a lot of money, uh, roughly 10% of our cash flow, into, into R&D in, in general, and, and roughly 80% of that R&D money is going into to fuel these new, new innovations where we aim to get breakthroughs in place. And those are in the areas of biochemicals, uh, they are, uh, this, this picture is actually from a, uh, from a plant that is operating since January this year in, in the southeastern part of Finland. It was a uh, 175 million euro investment. 
for second generation biofuels made of wood. Uh, and, and then we are have also a number of various biocomposite pro, uh, products in our, in our portfolio, which go into the area of design, design of patio material, patio areas, or, um, or loudspeakers. We are also offering wood composite material for, for acoustics industries. So, and, and, and also nanocellulose was mentioned over here. We've been uh, researching. Uh, with a partnership with uh, with the ma major Finnish actors here, and for seven years, uh, various applications for nanocellulose, and the first commercialization is actually in the area of of pharma industry. So it's actually a fantastic cell cultivation medium. It's pretty far away from traditional pulp and paper, right? If you talk about cell cultivation, and there are more to come. Uh, now, coming back then to the, how can we, we then work together with uh, startup companies, I think that what's typical for uh, UPM in our existing businesses, and, and it's also, there are in, at least in, uh, the similar amount of opportunities in our existing businesses as there are in the new businesses. But we operate with a very uh, long value chain. We start from the, start from the raw material from the forests, uh, that needs to be brought into our mill sites, which are pretty complex um, uh, mill sites. These are B2B businesses, and we have also energy uh, procurement, uh, or actually genera energy, genera sorry, energy generation locally there in, at, at our mill sites as well. We produce a lot of site streams, uh, and we make use of them uh, also, or try to make as much use as possible. We have a very complex sales and supply chain, as we ship these products all over the world. Uh, we have a lot of inventories here and there to be managed, and, and also a lot of SKUs. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, various type of customers. It all depends uh, in which our value chain we are. This is the representing our biorefining business. So my point here is that for startups, uh, you can easily engage even in one of these areas. You don't have to have total solution to be of interest for UPM. So even if you engage in, in forestry and, and wood sourcing, and this is, by the way, an area where we are here making a couple of pitches in the, in the pitching stage uh, during these two days, as an example, where we want to have some, some solutions, or in the area of production as well, not to talk about sales and supply chain. And uh, to be a bit more specific, I'd like to uh, uh, mention some ideas about, about what, uh, uh, what the, in a tangible form, these uh, openings could be. So then we start from the, let's say, solutions in the circular economy. Then we, our large industrial uh, manufacturing sites, they uh, produce a lot of waste heat. Uh, which basically could be utilized even more effectively. We think we've tried to do as much as we can, but we know there still is a lot to be done. Also, a lot of these side streams, we would, which used to be wastes earlier, we would like to turn into new revenue streams, new products. Uh, that's part of the resource efficiency uh, part that we, we are uh, considering. And uh, then I'd, next, I'd like to move into the customer-friendly digital solutions. I think that we can also turn the other way around. We've been threatened and, and challenged by the digitalization. Now we've come, come to the point where actually we are thinking, OK, okay how can we make digitalization uh, to, to work for us so that we, it would improve our business, improve our customer experience, improve our, how we handle uh, our business uh, and the complex, complex supply chain, as an example, and, and many, many matters. So we have a lot of activities going on in the, in the digital uh, arena currently as well. And that, that is something that we have high hopes going forward. And that might bring me to the next point, which is about industrial internet. This is clearly of a high interest area for UPM. Uh, we were thrilled last year. Uh, being here in Slush for the first time, and actually we made a couple of, well, let's say, half a dozen contacts 
which we have now piloted in small scale. Uh, and some of these pilots are already been finished. Some of them are still going on. But we have very good uh, uh, experiences from, from these trials. And they've spanned various types of opportunities from customer interface, digitalization, um, how to uh, optimize and manage our energy business, as an example, up until the forestry. So there are many, many other opportunities. And maintenance will be one area where we will put a lot of emphasis in the, in the future. And lastly, I'd like to comment that we also have developed over these years a pretty large uh, portfolio of, of patents that we would like and we can see that uh, startups can work with us in commercializing them in new ways, you know, some of the non-core non patents. And please, so if you're, if you're interested, um, that is an area where we can also find good cooperation. So, please help us maneuver in this transformation journey, which will continue, I'm sure, at least for the next 10 years. And I'm sure that startups can really speed up our development in a big way. And if you, want to, if you feel that you have something to offer for UPM and want to, want to join forces, basically there are two alternatives. Either go to our website and you, can be, you will be then navigated forward you know, and, and, and so that your contacts will be taken. Or then I'm sure there are a number of UPMers here. They all will now rise up. So there you can clearly see UPMers, so pick your choice and, and uh, have a word with those people. Thank you very much for your attention.